right, we are looking at equations and we start with equations that require us to solve for x. So in the first equation, we have four to the power x plus eight, which equals uh, nine times two to the power x. Number two is uh, two minus 16, x to the power minus three over two. And uh, equals zero. And you also have the third equation, which is the x to the root of nine equals two forty three. Okay, so it's another equation we need to solve. Or so, um, it's very important then that um, yeah you think of this. Right, I'm sure you're done right now. Um, right? Yeah. You done? Um, not really. Not really. Okay, let's get started with the first one. Um, because you have four to the power x, and the number four can be written as two to the power two, but there's an x plus the number eight equals nine times two to the power x. This becomes two to the power x all squared plus the number eight is nine two to the power x. Now in number one, if we have two to the power x all squared plus the number eight is nine times two to the power x, we proceed to let k be two to the power y to the power x. So wherever there is x, we have k squared plus 8 equals 9k. And this is called the k method. Right. This is called the k method. We have k squared minus 9k plus 8 equals 0. What are the factors of this? So when you multiply k squared and 8, you multiply k squared and 8, you get 8k squared, which is minus 8k minus k. And this gives us k squared minus 8k minus k plus 8 equals 0. Number 1, k squared minus 8k minus k plus 8 equals 0. Fact out k and you have k minus eight. K minus eight, which means you have k minus eight. At this point, when you factor out the k minus eight, it becomes like a common factor and you therefore have k minus one equals zero, which means k is eight, or k is one, but k is two to the power x. If k is two to the power x, it would mean therefore here, we have k equals eight or k equals one. So we, it therefore means that we therefore be having two to the power x equals eight. Or here it would mean that Two to the power x equals one. Two to the power x equals eight. Raised to the power of two to the power three. Okay, so this one becomes two to the power three. Two to the power x equals two to the power zero. X is three or x is what? Is zero.
So this is the answer. Three or zero. Okay. But hello, no, this is how the question had to be done, okay. Yes, sir. Next point is number two. Two minus sixteen x to the power minus three over two. Right, so you have. 2 minus 16x to the power minus 3 over 2 equals 0. I'm giving you two minutes Pahala, to do this one. Okay, sir. And let me know, please, when you're done. Yes, what answer did you get? I got one over three. Okay, that's fine because we're learning. Now, one thing you can do here is to have this minus 16 to the power minus three over two equals minus two. Divide both sides by minus 16 and it becomes minus three over two is minus two over minus 16. And therefore, it becomes x oh. to the power minus 3 over 2 is 1 out of 8, like this. So which means, for number 2, with x to the power minus 3 over 2 is 1 out of 8. x to the power minus 3 over 2 is 2 to the power minus 3, because 8 can bring us to the power minus 3. Okay, so if we have an equation like this, you can raise it to the power minus one minus one. X to the power three over two is two to the power three. X to the power three over two is two to the power three. And then at this point, we need to solve for x here. And to solve for x here, you can raise everything to, you can raise everything to one third. Okay, yeah. One third both sides. Okay, so, and this is one half. Okay. And then now, what is the answer here? You square the left and you also square the right. Which, if you square two, you get what? Oh, that is what you got, uh, um, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, that is what another student got. Okay, because we gave this one. Okay, please pay attention because I'm going to give you a lot of problems now to try with me. 
Uh, but you need to try them first. Okay, now if you look at the first quiz, like, okay, this part is what I'm going to give you. Um, what did you do first? We transposed the two and it became negative degree. And we divided by minus 16 and we, we simplified minus 2 over minus 16, which became 1 eighth. And then we acted upon minus 1 eighth and it became x to the minus 3 over 2, which is 2 to the minus 3. And then now, because we have negative powers here, we can, we can just read the power minus 3 and we got 3 over 2. And the, then we got uh, 4. Okay, let's try this question. Okay, this is recorded, so you have access to the full recording, so do not stress much. Now, the, 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 the x root, this is called the x root of 9 equals 2, 4, 3. And start it with it, please. Okay. Um, uh, um, yeah. The X root of nine is two four three. Okay. I'm giving you two minutes to try this one. Two minutes. Nice and short. Nice and short. You done, Pachalelo? Okay. What is the first step? Let's talk about it. What is the first step? Okay, the first step is to use the law of exponents because if you have uh, a to the power n, then m here, it is a to the power n over m. So that here, if this is to the power 1 like this, it is 9 to the power 1 over x which is 243. The number 243 is the same as 3 to the fifth power. This is 9 to the power 1 over x. Uh, okay, so we can do this, but also here we can change this one. The base 9 is 3 squared. So that's 3. 1 over x is uh, 3 to the 5th power. So this is 3 to the here. Now, 2 times 1 here, just not like the numerator. Getting 2 over x, 3 to the 5th power. The base are the same, which means 2 over x is this one. And we cross multiply this. 2 is 5x. If 2 is 5x, then what is x? You divide by 5, which means 2 out of 5 equals what? Equals x. Any question on this one, guys? Any question on this? Where's the question? No question. Hello, are you, uh, yeah, do you understand? Yes, I got similar answer. Okay, you get a similar answer. Okay, excellent. Awesome. Okay, we are but moving. I, okay. Uh -huh. On the first step, I said 9 to the power 1 over x. Oh, 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 okay. Okay. Uh -huh. It's fine. Oh, it's fine. Yeah. Okay, these things, you need to write them in your book. You need to copy down the notes. Mm -hmm. At the end of the video, you need to, because now sometimes I'm, I'm writing fast. So you might not be able to copy everything, but during your own leisure, you need to copy down, copy down um, the notes, some notes. Okay, let's try this one. I need more attempts. Two to the power x, the square root of x, 
equals two to the power twenty seven. Are you able to see this question? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm giving you two minutes quickly. Everyone, go for it. Okay, you done? No. Okay. Does anyone finish now? Um, okay, please finish up quickly. And give me the value of X, please, when you're done. Oh, uh, I finished, so. What did you get uh, the value of X to be done? Uh, uh, it was nine. Okay, nine is correct. Well done. Can I still try and sure? Okay, first things first is to realize that the bases are the same. The bases are what? The same how we equate the exponents. Right, we're the exponents, uh, we shall have x, uh, the square root of x is equal to what? Is equal to 27. Obviously, you need to write clearly that the understanding is it is actually x root of x. So, now this one is x to the power 1 times x to 1 half, it is 27. 1 plus 1 half is what? Is 3 over 2 equals 27? Like this. And so now we raise the left to the power 2 over 3 and the right to the power 2 over 3. So we have x. to the power 3 over 2, 2 over 3, 27 to the power 2 over 3, 27 to the power 2 over 3. 
which is x now two cancels and three cancels so that here you have 27 is 3 to the power 3 2 over 3 is the power and three cancels giving us uh just three squared so here you're gonna have three squared here and three squared is what is nine so the answer is nine check the question this is the question we have to solve for x and we have solved for x any question please any question Who has a question? No question. X is nine. Let's look at an expression. Let's look at an expression. Calculate. Okay, this video is recorded in case you cannot get a chance to copy everything. Right, another question comes and says calculate. Calculate the sum. Um, right, calculate the sum of the digits. Right, calculate the sum of the digits. of the digits of two to the power Sir. Hello. So. Welcome. Okay, we have a small, uh, we're doing, we're solving mathematics uh, questions now. Focusing on some equations. So you have two to the power 2015 times the five to the power 2019. The question is calculate the sum of the digits of that. And we're looking at the solution here. Anyone, please try this question, all of you. When you're done, let me know. When you're done, please let me know. When you're done, please let me. Please let me know when you're done because you want to find the sum of the digits. Okay, please let me know when you're done. Okay. All right. Okay, we lost Senator that is back. We had lost him. Okay, yeah.
finished yes sir okay you don't turn to what did you get I got, uh, is it six hundred and twenty five times ten to the export rate of two thousand and fifteen? Okay, so what is the sum of the digits? Penula, are you here? Tahelelo, are you here? Yes, sir. I'm here, sir. Okay, try the question, please, uh, Tenulo. Calculate the sum of the digits of 2 to the power 2015 times 5 to the power 2019. All right, Tahalelo, how far? I'm getting away. Okay. Is it easy? No. Yeah, because we want to find the sum of the digits of that number. Right. When you're done, please select me. Okay. Senula, how far? Senula, are you done? Yes, sir. What is the answer? Six two five. Uh huh. What is the answer? Is it six to five? Tell me now, what's the answer? I'm not sure, so I'm still working on it. Okay. Senulu, please finish up. Two to the power twenty fifteen times five to the power Right, you need to finish off, guys. You do not have the whole year to do this question. We just have some little time.
So please, let's push. Let us push. Let us push. Let us push, guys. How far, anyone? It's not coming, I would say. <laughs> say no, no. I say, no. I'm trying, say, no. You are trying? Yeah. This was a past exam question that it, they gave it four marks. So I just wanted to see, obviously, we're just doing a lot of past exam questions now. All right, this is too easy. Uh, Pepanella, how far? I say, I usually copy the question for her. <laughs> okay that's a good question have i copied the question properly properly yes i'm checking and that's what i'm seeing here that it has been copied correctly okay let me give you one last minute to finish off because the question is calculate the sum of the digits of this number okay i know that is very easy Let's just do it quickly. So it is uh, 2 to the power 2 to 15. 5 to the power 20 to 15. 5 to the power 4. Okay, because 19 is the same as 20 15 plus this. So we're you can write it like that, or in the first, at the first, uh, or first and foremost, you can write it like this, because 2015 is the same as uh, 2019 is the same as 2015 plus four. You have 2015 times five to the power. 2015 times five to the fourth power. So this is equal to two to the power 2015 times five to the power 2015 times five to the fourth power. This is exactly two times five because these ones have the same power. So you can write 2015 here. Times five to the fourth power is six to five. So this is exactly six to five times 10 to 2015. Yes, sir, I got there, but then the computers gave me an error, so to calculate it. <laughs> it gave you an error. Yeah, so you can't calculate so, that number. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I know. That is why they gave the question. They wanted to see what you can do without a calculator. That's why they just put some big powers there. Okay, right. So 10 to the power, like, what is 10 to the power 2? 100. 10 to the power 3? 1,000. It's 1,000. So 10 to the power 3 has three zeros. 10 to the power 2 has how many zeros? Two zeros. Two. Yes. And then 10 to the power 1 has how many zeros? One zero. So 10 to the power 2015 is going to have how many zeros? Two. No. <laughs> because it's 10 to the power 1 has one. 10 to the power 2 has how many zeros? Two. And 10 to the power 3 has 
three zeros. And then mm. take to the power 2015, it's going to have how many zeros? Oh, 215. It's, it's going to have exactly 2015 zeros. 2000. 2015. So, which means, therefore, that we shall have so many ah. of them. But they're going to be 2015 zeros. Right. So they're going to be like 2015 zeros here. Um, 2015 zeros. So in other words, we have 625. One, two, three, one, two, three, and so on. And then we have 2015 zeros. Okay, now it's easy because you can just find the sum of the digits. Sum. Sum of the digits. Six plus two plus five plus zero plus zero. And then we add all of them, this. And here we are adding 2050 zeros. But we can't write all of them because two, the uh, uh, 2015 zeros are too many. Okay, so in the end, but those zeros do not count because if you add zero plus zero, it's still zero. So it's like now you're adding six plus two and you're getting eight plus five, and, and that is 13. So the sum of the digits is only what? It's only 13. Then those zeros do not change anything. Sum of the digits equals 13. What's the question here? Too easy. Yeah. Is it too easy, Pehelelo? Yes, when you do it. Yes, okay, I'm glad that at least now, obviously, when you watch the video again, just take note of these things and make sure that you make sense of these. And and you learn from this because that is the most important thing, learning from these things um, as you as you move on. And so, right, let us continue to solve more problems. Um, right, this question says, uh, Solve for X. Solve for X if we have number one, one over X is less than zero. Please let me know when you're done. Okay, let me know when you're done. Please let me know when you're done. Anyone who is done?
Is it too easy? Anyone, please? Let's say oh. X is less than zero. X is less than zero. How did you get the answer uh, there, um, um, Tando? The critical value, sir. The critical value. So the critical value at this point is what? Is zero. So now uh, that's correct. You're right. So we can get the solution to this. So to get the solution to this, uh, we first uh, note the question x is less than zero. And then uh, we find the critical value. The critical value is x equals zero. Right, and then we put a number line. Right, and when you put the number line, just a horizontal line like so. And uh, we put zero here. So now you want to find the value of x, or at this point, or you put one of x. When x is on the other side, uh, when x is less than zero, pick a random number that is smaller than zero, maybe minus two, you put it in the place of x, it will be one over minus two, and the result is negative. Bigger than zero, maybe it is two, one over two is positive. And therefore, at this point, uh, we're interested in the part where, so obviously with the signs you have here, are uh, these final signs, you're interested in the parts where one over x is uh, negative, so, which means, therefore, at this point, uh, what we have um, is that uh, it is true. Um, this one of x is negative only when x is in the zero. Negative on the negative part. Negative part of the real line. Okay, so just note that. Any question? No question. Okay, let's look at this particular question here. Let's look at this particular question here. Let's look at this particular question. Right, we need to solve for x given. Two to the power three x. Plus one. Plus two to the power three x equals 12. Let's solve for x here. And please let me know when you're done. Please let me know when you're done. Anyone who is done yet? Anyone who is done yet? No. Okay. You are finishing time, though, right? And uh, no, just a little bit. <laughs> All right. Sir? Yes, the hell hello, you're done. Yes, I got two over three. You got two over three. Okay, let's just check quickly. The hell hello seems to be done and uh, was as fast as lightning here. Let's see. 
how well we can be in a position to solve this. So we have with us two to the power three X plus one plus two to the power three X equals 12. Uh -huh. so you have two to the power three X times two to the power one, two to the power three X equals 12. 2 to the power 3x, we have 2 plus 1 plus 12. So obviously at this point, we break this down because 2 to the power 3x plus 1 can return as 2 to the power 3x and then times 2 to the power 1 uh, plus uh, 2 to the power 3x equals 12. So you have 2 to the power 3x into 2 plus 1 equals 12. So which is uh, 2 to the power 3x into 2 plus 1 equals 12. And then 2 plus 1 is what? 3. It is 3. Equals 12, meaning 2 to the power 3x times 3, you divide by 3 on the left, you divide by 3 on the right, and 2 to the power 3x equals 4. Mm -hmm. So this is 2 to the power 3x, and the 4 is 2 to the power 2. So we can see, therefore, that the powers are the same at this point. Uh, the bases are the same. Right? So that 3x equals 2. And if 3x equals 2, it means, therefore, x is 2 over 3. What answer did you get, Pekhanelo? 2 over 3. Okay, that's excellent stuff. I think that that is good news. And this is promising. Right, so let us continue. In earnest... Let us continue in earnest. Because at this point, uh, we were given this question that 2 to the power 3x plus 1 plus 2 to the power 3x equals 12. And uh, we're able to solve this step by step. OK. Solve for x here. OK, now proceed to solve for x. Given 2x minus 3 into x plus 7 is equal to 0. Okay, solve for x here, please, and uh, share your answer. Say x, x is equal to three over two, okay, or x, x is equal to. X equals three over two, or? X is equal to negative seven. X equals minus seven. So yeah, that is correct. Any question about the values of x here? Okay. No question. So everybody understands this. Mm -hmm. All right. If, if f of x equals zero has roots, has root x equals minus five plus or minus the square root of three minus 12k squared divided by four. Which, for which values of k will the roots for which values of k will the roots 
be equal. Okay, if f of x equals zero has roots, those ones, for which values of k will the roots be equal? Any question or any any answer, please? I'm just giving you a couple of minutes, so we shall present a solution to this one. Very shortly, but let's try the question. Let's try the question. Let's try the question. Okay, we have three minus 12 k squared divided by four. You see the question is here, if f of x is zero has roots that for which values of k equal? For which rest of k will the roots be equal? So, Anyone who is done? Anyone who is done? I uh, said, so do we look for the nature of roots? Yes, I don't care what you do. There are many ways to do the question. Um, one way is to look actually and focus or uh, is to focus on the nature of roots. Um, so, yeah, but I'm just giving you like two more minutes, please. <laughs> okay, two more minutes. Pekalelo, what do you think? I'm still busy, sir. Tenulo, what do you think? I'm also still busy, sir. Okay, I'm giving you two more minutes, guys. Okay, I, I, I got a comment from Tando. So yeah, I'm giving you like two more minutes. Two more minutes.
Okay. How far? Anyone? Are you able to see the question or not? So delta should be equal to zero. Delta should be equal to zero. Yeah. Good. So delta should be equal to zero because we're looking for the nature of roots. Focusing on the nature. Nature of what? Of roots. Delta is always b squared minus 4a what? Minus 4ac, it is always i what is under the square root sign. And so at this point, uh, it is uh, 3 minus 12k squared, and this is equal to what? It's equal to 0 because uh, for equal roots. It's equal to 0 for equal, for equal roots. So if it is equal to zero for equal roots, it means therefore you have three minus 12K squared equals zero. K squared is equal to what? You can write it here. Right, so with this then you can write here and say, move the three to the other side. Or just minus 12, does it matter? Divide both left and right by 12, minus 12, getting one quarter. So if k squared is one quarter, square root of k squared, so which means k is, okay, yeah, is the square root, so the practice is to leave the two, there's always an invisible two with the square root, so that um, what we're thinking here is uh, the square root of, uh, so it is plus or minus one half, and that's the answer. Plus or minus one half, and that is, and that is the answer. Any question? Right. Next question is this one. Any question on this one? No question on this one, right? Okay, but yeah, we're recording these, so you'll have a chance to view these and you can play back. You can pause. If, if X is three minus, the square root of a. Over the square root of two. And y is four plus the square root of a. Okay. All over the square root of two. Determine. The very off. Determine the value of that one. Okay, anyone? Try this one two minutes, please. Find this one quickly.
finished. Okay, who is not done yet? Who is uh, not done yet? Oh, so I'm almost done. All right, that's fine, Tando. Good. How far, Tendo? I say very far. Okay, yeah, push fast, please. I just need to know uh, because I know it's easy, but I'm trying to see if you guys can get this. All right. Oh, oh, say I got so... forty-two. You got forty-nine over four. Okay, you are on the right track. Let's just check quickly. So we have we need to find x plus y all squared. X is three. Of 49 over 2. Over the square root of 2, the square root of a over the square root of 2. The y is, okay, yeah, you're on point. Over 2 is correct. Okay, so it is x plus y. And so x is 3 over the square root of 2, and then this minus over, over the square root of 2, over the square root of 2 plus a over the square root of 2. And therefore, uh, if you look at this very carefully, uh, these two guys cancel out. And then what we have here is when you add these things up, it, it's going to be 3 plus 4. And 3 plus 4 is 7 out of the square root of 2. All squared. And if you square uh, 7, you get 49. And you square the square root of 2, what do you get? You get a 2. Like the next. Okay. Any question? Here's another question. Simplify. To an integer. Simplify to an integer. When you have this one. The twelfth root. Of ten. Times. The sixth root. Of six forty. Times. The fourth root of a ten times the square root of forty. Okay, so this is the twelfth root of ten.
So we're looking for this solution here. Right, so um we continue. Oops. Right, so you just simplify to an integer. Let me know when you're done, please. Okay. How far, anyone? Okay. Finished. Are you done? Not yet. Okay, so. okay. I'm giving you like one more minute, please, quickly. Hello, how far? Um, almost done. Almost done. Okay.
finished? Say I got uh, 120. You got 120 in our 120 second answer. Okay, well done. Okay, um, and uh, let's just go through together. Now, 120 is indeed the correct answer. Let's just go through it uh, together here. Okay, so we start with, uh, with the fact that if one has the 12th root of 10, right, and then times the 6th root, of 64, of 610, 640. Okay, times the fourth root, a 10 times the square root of 40. Right, what is the answer to this? And the answer to this is that 10 to the power, 10 to, or rather the, the 12th root of 10 is 10 to the power one half. Now here you are, you are dealing with the sixth root of 64 times 10. 64 times 10 is 640. And then here you are dealing with the fourth root. The fourth root of 81 times 10, because 81 times 10 is 810. Four times 10. Ten to the power one twelfth, the sixth root of sixty four is two to the power six times ten. Eighty one is three to the fourth power times ten. The number four is two squared times 10. So there's times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. As a consequence, then you can write this one as 10 to the power 1 12 times 2 to the power 6 out of 6. 1 out of 6. 3 to the power 4 of 4, 10 to the power 1 quarter, 2 to the power 2 out of 2, 10 to the power 1 of. And at this point, what we're able to see is that the 2 here is 2 to the power 1, and then there's also so in other words, there's going to be two times, and then there is the this three to the power four to the power uh, three to the power four out of four, which is just three. Two to the power two out of two is just two. Ten. Ten to the power. This one is one out of twelve. This one is going to be one out of six, but it's like two out of twelve. Um, so it's one, two, three out of 12. So that's three here. And this one is six. So one plus two is three. Plus three, six. Plus six, 12. 10 to the power, 12 out of 12. Okay, so now, 10 to the power 2 over 12. Okay, it's like 10 to the power 1. So now this is 2 times 3. 1, 2 times 3. 2 times 3 is exactly 6. 6 times 2 is 12. 12 times 10 is 1 
120 is the answer to this question. Any question? So this is how this problem had to be done and it had to be simplified to an integer. Okay. All right, let's continue. Okay. Right, so next thing is to proceed as follows and solve. So for a for x. Solve for x. Number one. If uh, four to the power x is equal to cosine sixty degrees. Okay, try this one quickly. Please let me know when you're done. What topic are you doing at the moment at school, um, Tando? What math, what math topic? We were... Doing reduction mostly, sir. Please come again. Reduction. Oh, reduction formula. Yes, sir. All right. Trigonometry, in trigonometry, right? But now, uh, today we are proving identities. Oh, all right. That's fine. Okay, good. Now, um, just do this one quickly. So isn't it negative a half? <laughs> okay. Tenulo, right? Let's see Tenulo and I. Tenulo is on point. Okay. So we are given uh, the power x, which is cosine uh, 60 degrees. Is cosine 60 degrees. Okay, obviously we remember the trigonometric ratios and the fact that the 60 degrees uh, is set here and this is two and this is one and this is square root of three. Okay, so the four to the power x, uh, we already know that it is a four is two times two, so it's two to the power two x and the cosine 60 is, we use Sokotoa. And the cosine is uh, opposite over um, is adjacent over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent sixty over hypotenuse, which is one half. And so this is two to the power two x, and the half is two to the power that, which means two x is minus one. And if two x is minus one, it means x is minus one half. is minus one half. We shall have lots of midweek pop-up discussions. So let's get ready. I'm gonna I'm gonna put you on the group. So yeah. I'm going to put you on the group.
Next, we proceed, right? Okay. No question, I believe, on this one. And uh... okay, solve this one. If we have x plus one. into x minus three is bigger than 12. Okay. Solve for x, please. Right, here we're saying solve for x. Finished. Okay. Please let let me know when you're done. Right. Uh, x is equal to negative three and five. Okay, that's minus three and five. Okay, I'm gonna check that. Yeah, might be right. Absorb x plus one. X minus three is bigger than twelve. We expand these, multiply x by x, so we get x squared. X by minus three, you get minus three x. X by one, you get x. So one by minus three is minus three is bigger than twelve. Minus three x plus x uh, is minus two x. Minus fifteen. Right. So now x squared minus fifteen. You get minus fifteen x squared. Okay, so you look for the factors, you multiply x squared with minus 15. Then you look for the factors of 15 that will give minus 2, and those are minus 5x and 3x. But here you have x squared minus x plus 3x. Minus 15 is bigger than 0. So that you have x squared minus 5x plus 3x minus 15 is greater than 0. OK, x is a common factor. You have x minus 5 here. And 3 is the highest common factor of the last two terms, giving us x minus 5 bigger than 0. 
And we continue to f do further analysis of this. You cross this out until if you cross that out because it's common, you take it as the highest common factor and you have x plus three is bigger than zero. What are the critical values? Okay, the critical values are five minus three. Right, so, so yes. And if you use squaring, squaring the square F. Yeah? Completing the square, completing the square. Okay. Will you get the same answers? Yes, yes, that would be excellent. You'll get the same answer. I did it with um, completing the square, but I got X is larger than 14. Okay, we'll check that one, we'll check that one. Okay, um, that's fine. So here you put minus three here and you put five there and these are the, this is the X, uh, uh, X line. So now we're looking for where this is greater, strictly greater than zero, the quadratic is greater than zero. Greater than zero is here above, greater than zero is also here above. So that in the end, then you have minus three is less than X, less than five. No? Okay. <laughs> right. Obviously, to see that this is uh, where these are bigger than zero, that would mean x is less than minus three or x is bigger than five. Because when it's bigger than five, you go higher like this. And when you go less than three, you go higher like this. So obviously, it's when you go in these directions that um, you have that the quadratic is greater than zero. Greater than zero when the quadratic progresses, upwards above the the real uh the real line and also in progresses above here and so this is the answer so yeah uh, somebody called this answer tell you answers like this sort of right yes sir okay there's another question okay Pekhanero said if you use completing the square right yes yeah okay this completing the square we must get the same answer um how do you know if these answers are correct? Okay, now to know if these answers are correct, you can check. When this says X must be bigger than five, for example, X must be bigger than five. So you go back to the original uh, um, uh, inequality. X bigger than five, what value of X bigger than five? Can You can pick any random X value bigger than five to check these. Okay, like what X is what? Maybe six. You can pick six. Okay. Then you put six plus one. What is six plus one? Seven. Seven. And then here you're gonna have six minus three. What is six minus three? Three. Three. And then you're gonna have like seven by three. What is seven by three? three. Okay, seven by three is twenty-one, and therefore you're able to see that twenty-one is bigger than twelve. Okay, so it's just a way to test. So with that test, then you can see, okay, indeed this inequality is correct. All right. But you can use also completing the square to this question. Completing the square is also correct. Okay, I'm gonna use completing the square in the next in the next question. Before you use completing the square, let's solve for A and B. Solve for the values of A and B. Three A minus eight. Two B plus seven equals what? Zero. Solve for the values of A and B here. Anyone? Please solve this one quickly, and so that we can look at the solution to this.
let's say a is equal to 8 over 3. Mm -hmm. Or yeah. And B okay. is equal to a is negative seven. Seven over three, or B is what? Negative seven over two. Well done. Okay, use the method of completing the square. Solve for x by completing the square. Analo used that method, which is excellent. Now let's just try here. Plus one equals zero. Okay, and uh, do that one, correct to two decimal places. Two, correct to two decimal. Places. Look at the solution to this. Okay, let's do this in yellow. Okay, please try it, everyone. Finished. Okay. How far, anyone? Yes. Two comma two five. Two comma two five. Okay, that sounds correct. And the other one? Oh, I only got one. Okay, that's fine. Let's just check quickly. So obviously we have this one here and we need to solve for x. Okay, that's fine. So which means that okay, the kind of reason point. So you can always have equal roots when the roots are repeated. So you write this one here, now you divide both. We must have make sure the coefficient of x squared is one, so we divide through by four. So you divide 20 by four. And then we have x squared minus 20. Okay, divide here. Okay, if you divide 20 by four, you get a five. Right, so. Right, you take the coefficient of X, you half it. You square and you subtract the same thing.
and then you have one quarter equals zero. Okay, because now these things here now they can't they can cancel out this. So the same thing they cancel out. So it's like you have not changed the original one because it's like the same thing minus itself. So it's still these the two terms there and the one quarter. So completing the square, then this is going to be exactly x in minus 5 over 2 squared. You transpose this to the other side. Minus 5 squared is what? It's 25. 2 squared is 4. Minus 1 quarter. And then now here you have 25. Out of four minus one quarter. What is 25 minus one? It's 24 over four. What is 24 over four? It's a six. So here you have x squared. And uh, you have plus or minus. You apply the square root like that. So if you have the square root of x minus 5 over 2 squared equals plus or minus the square root of 6. Okay, so... So this is exactly 5 over 2. 5 over 2 plus or minus square root of 6. So which means the answer is what? Okay, so you can split it up. Five over two plus the square root of six. Or x is five over two minus the square root of six. Or which is exactly 4x squared minus 20x plus 1 equals 0. Okay, so this is the answer. But you can just write the decimals or, or to this. So which means that um, you have x Five over two, then minus plus first. Five over two, minus decimals. I guess got the decimals. What are the decimals? Now the plus is going to be four point nine five to two decimal places. 0 0.05 to two decimal places. So that's the answer. And given this, uh, by completing the square, we have been able to solve this particular question. Sir? Yes, so Takalelo? So when you substitute them, they should give you exactly zero. Yes, we, okay, that's a good question. When substitute, they should give exactly zero. You see, because they've been uh, estimated, so there's some discrepancy there, they, might, they, they, they will not potentially give you exactly zero because the estimate roots, because like 4.95, so. They will give, okay, that's a good point. So it's good to, to always check. 
Okay, but when you check then, they'll give something close to zero, but... Yes, I got zero comma zero one. Yeah, so yeah, it's zero comma zero. That's a good point. So zero comma zero one is fair. It's, it's it's correct because why? Because these are estimates. They're not they're not accurate roots. But if you put on your calculator this whole root, like five over two plus the square root of six, and then also you put five over two minus square root of six, you put it into the original here, you'll get zero exactly on the calculator. Okay, so yeah, so that is the difference. So if you put the 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 the, the, the most accurate one, then you get zero. But those decimals will because it depends on to what extent we actually have rounded off. So yeah, but that's a good point uh, you are raising there. Let's look at one question. Let us discuss. Let's discuss a little bit something called the nature of roots. Right, so given. P plus one X squared. Plus twice PX. Plus P plus two. Equals zero. Uh, number one, determine, right, determine the value of P the value of P if the roots of the equation Are equal. For Max, let's look at this one. Please get started with this one and let me know when you're done with it. Given p plus 1 into x squared to plus 2px plus p plus 2 equals 0, determine the value of p if the roots of the equation are equal. Please let me know when you're done. Please let me know when you're done.
mir nicht. Tenno Lohofa. A little fast, eh? All right. Yeah, please push quickly. Um, because his nature of roots, uh, they're saying determine the value of P if the roots of the equation are equal. If the roots of the equation are equal, we need to find uh, the value of P. Finished. Right, please. Let me know when you're done. Finished. And no, how far?
They said it's long, said you. Oh. Is it long? Easy. Okay. Yes, All right, that's good. Finish up, please. I'm giving you like one more minute, please. But how far? How far? Okay. Please push quickly. Right, we have been given P plus one. X squared. Right, p plus one in brackets x squared, twice px, equals zero. Okay, so this is the equation. So now if this becomes the equation, then we proceed to solve this step by step. And we remember that we are dealing with the nature of roots. So we are dealing with b squared minus 4ac. b is very clear, is twice p squared minus 4a is p plus 1 and c is p plus 2. And therefore, we square the, the 2p, giving us 4p squared, minus 4. Let's just multiply within the brackets. p plus by p is p squared, twice p, plus, plus p plus 2, giving us 4p squared, minus 4 into p squared, 2p plus p is exactly 3p plus 2, which is 4p squared minus 4p squared minus 12p minus 8. What is this here? Minus 12p minus 8. Right, so what we're getting is that uh, delta is actually equal to minus 12p minus 8. Like this. And then we write like this and we say for equal roots because the examiner said here, determine the value of p if the roots of the equation are equal. If the roots, if the roots are equal. For equal roots.
We have delta equals zero. Which means therefore that uh, if delta is zero, for equal roots we say the discriminant, the discriminant is zero, which is delta. So which means that you have minus 12p minus eight equals zero. Minus 12p and then four goes how many times into eight? It goes two times and it goes three times into 12 and therefore the answer is minus two over three. Minus two over three. Um, the next question is that we need to determine determine the value or values of P P not equal to minus one so that the above equation has roots um, which are real rational and unequal let's look at the solutions to this Determine the value of values of P not equal to minus one so that the above equation has rules which are real, rational, and unequal. And the equation, I'm just going to cite it again. We are given This one plus two px, goodness me, plus p plus two equals zero. That is the equation. Please do this question for two marks. Determine the value of values of P, where P is not equal to minus one, so that the above equation has roots which are real, rational, and unequal. So obviously P is not equal to minus one because, why is P not equal to minus one? Because if P were to be minus one, then if you put minus one here in the place of P, you'd have minus one plus one, which is zero, and then zero by x squared, and if it, the coefficient of x squared is zero, it means we do not have a quadratic. Don't have a, we do not have a quadratic equation. So we must therefore restrict p from being minus one. But we're saying therefore determine the values of p not equal to minus one so that the above equation has roots which are real, rational, and unequal. Please solve that one quickly.
Anyone who is done now, please quickly. See, our delta has to be greater than zero. Okay, uh huh. Has to be greater than zero. And delta should be a perfect square. Okay, good. Delta must be greater than zero because of the real part. So, uh, because the examiner says uh, the real, real means um, delta, real means delta must be greater than zero, okay? Rational means delta must be some k squared. Unequal means what? So obviously, I mean, rational means that delta must be a perfect square. And then real means what? Re yeah, real means greater than zero. And equal means what? Unequal means what? What do what 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 does unequal mean here? So it's not equal to one, negative one. Uh huh. Well, okay. Unequal means that delta must be must not be zero. Delta is not zero. Okay, because if delta is not zero, because if the roots are equal, for equal roots, for equal roots, delta is equal to zero. So for unequal roots, delta is not equal to zero. Okay? Because we did the equal roots. So now, we already know the question is given two marks because we already know delta for this question. What is delta? Delta is, we already know, is minus 12p minus 8. Minus 12p minus 8. That is what? Delta. Okay, if delta is minus, we just need to apply these properties and then say delta must be greater than 0, delta must be perfect square, but delta um, cannot be equal to 0. So, and uh, what is then um, the answer to this question? What is then the answer to this question? So we therefore require that delta be greater than zero. Which means minus 12p minus 8 is greater than what? Zero. Okay, you can solve here. Minus 12p is bigger than 8. 12p8. So this is less. So the answer is P is less than minus two thirds. P is less than minus two thirds. Okay, that is the answer. Okay, we continue. So for X. So for X given three to the power two minus X plus eight, which equals three to the power X. 
do this one quickly and change your solution to it, please. Okay, who is done? So x is two. Okay, let's check. X is two. Is that Tenulo? Or Tando? Yeah, it's me. It's tenulo, sir. Tenulo, okay. <laughs> right, Tenulo, let's check together. Okay, so we have been given this question here. And uh, now, because of this, then you can write it as three to the power two, three to the power minus x plus eight equals three to the power x. And then now three to the power two is what? Is nine over three to the power x. Three to the power x. Let k be three to the power x, which is k. Wherever there is three to the power x you put, Okay, and, and this constitutes something we call the K method. Okay, K method. I want to check if Tenulo's answer is correct because. So we have 9 out of K plus K equals K. 9 out of K. Please. Nine out of k plus eight equals k. Right, nine out of k plus eight equals k. You multiply it through by k, and therefore this is nine. Eight k multiplied through by k becomes k squared, which is k squared minus. 8k minus 9 equals 0, which is k minus 9 here, k plus 1 equals 0. k is 9, k is minus 1. But obviously, K is three to the power x. And so it means that here the three to the power x equals nine. Oh three to the power x is minus one. But this the exponential function cannot be minus one, which means three to the power x is nine is three by three, which means x is two, like this. So yeah, so you got the answer, right? Okay, that's awesome. I think I need to give you a break. So I'm giving you a break and then now you need to take a break and chill. Take a chill pill. And let me see. Even tomorrow at half past four we are meeting. 
So as you're planning your Sunday, please make sure that by half past four, you are close to your thing. But I said the, the mandatory, the most mandatory for mathematics is a, is compulsory um, at 4 p.m. You must, Saturday at 4 p.m. But Sunday at 4 p.m., we're meeting. You have a choice. But we shall be looking at more problems tomorrow. So um, I would advise you guys to, to join us because we shall be doing more and more problems tomorrow. Okay, let us solve for X first before we go. This one. Solve for X. If you have X minus, Five plus x is seven. Okay, I'm giving you like two minutes, please try this one. And let me know when you're done. So please let me know when you're done. Okay, what's the answer, guys? Anyone? X is equal to 11. Okay, X is 11. Let's check if 11 is going to work. Because now, 11 by, before we do, it, we do this, okay? Uh, uh, 5 plus 11 is 16, and the square of 16 is a 4, and uh, 11 minus 4 is actually um, a 7, so... Um, good, yeah, so that is correct, but let's just uh, um, solve this step by step together. So with x minus 5 plus x. So x minus 7. 5 plus x. x minus 7. 5. Which is x minus 7. Squared. Is, is 5 plus x. So this is exactly 5 plus x squared. So obviously here we are squaring both sides. Okay, if you square both sides here, this is going to be x squared. 
x by 7 times 2 is minus 14x. Plus 49 is 5 plus x. x squared minus 14x minus x minus 15x. Plus 44 because 49 minus 5 is 44. Okay, one way to find the factors is to multiply x squared by 44. Getting 44 x squared. And uh, what are the factors of 44 that give um, minus 15? So they're exactly minus um, 11 x minus 4 x. Which means at this point, uh, you have x squared minus 11x minus 4x plus 44 equals 0. So minus 11x minus 4 is minus 15, which means x into x minus 11 minus, which is minus that. So x minus 11 is the common factor and you have x minus four. So x minus 11 into x minus four equals zero. Okay. So what is this? Which means x is 11 or x is four. But we're checking against uh, this one here. X minus uh, the square root of five plus X uh, equals seven. Okay, so we're checking against uh, X minus five plus X equals seven. Right, so now if you check carefully, we saw that the 11 is correct. So, but let's just check four. You have five plus the four, which is a nine. The square root of nine is three. And so obviously at this point, uh, you have four minus uh, three. So, and that is, uh, it does not give us um, a seven thing. Okay, and that, that's interesting. So, in other words, um, this is. Uh, not correct, and therefore the only answer is uh, exactly 11. Right, so now uh, let me see what else I can give you. See what else I can give you. Okay, now this one is a homework. Right, so let me give you a home activity. Okay, um, um, simplify. Number one. Two to the n plus two. 4 to the power n plus 1 divided by a to the power n minus 1. And uh, number 2, solve for x given the square root of twice x plus one, which is uh, x minus one. 
So Okay, um, that is the home activity. Let's see what else we can give as well. As a home activity. Uh, solve for X. Okay, obviously this, this will be there on the video. So you will have a chance to, you have a chance to sort of watch it. When you watch the video, you can take down the, the home activity. Mm. Simplify. Simplify when you have three to the power m plus four. Minus six times three to the power n plus one divided by seven times n plus two. Solve. which is two, solve for x. All right, so this is the home activity, guys. Uh, we just have just uh, those particular questions and let us see what else to, to give, but also let's give number six. Solve for x given Square well, root of x minus one plus three is x plus seven. Let's see what else I can. Yeah, let me see what else I can give is in. Homework. Okay, now we say solve for x. Okay, now we have 7.1, which is 2x squared minus 2 is bigger or equal to 3x. 7.2, we have the square root. You have the square root of two x plus five. Two yeah. x plus five minus three over the square root of two x plus five is equal to minus two. Okay, so right, so yeah, these are the activities, um, home activity. I'm gonna see you tomorrow at, at 4 p.m., okay? So please, Sunday yeah. we're meeting at 4 p.m., Saturday we're meeting at 4 p.m., and during the week, I'm gonna be dropping in a lot of like pop-up, pop-up lessons, yeah. But for today, thank you guys so much. I'm gonna send the video link in the next couple of minutes. Yeah, thank you for the discussion and goodbye to you. Goodbye, guys. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye, everyone. Bye, goodbye, guys. <laughs>